we are going to be having a conversation with a few of your favorite influencers, for the lack of a better word, today and have a chat about the internet world and how their space is and how they react to that, especially in this revolutionary time like we are experiencing with the whole NSARS movement. Joining the Tea Time crew today is Talabi Tomiwa, who hails from Ogun State. He has been in the game for a long time. At 17, he started blogging about his experience through his blog called Unilag Gist. And now he is the CEO and founder of Lagos Life at Lagos Life, an online platform that showcases the true essence of Lagos. Although Tomiwa is not from Lagos, he is very passionate about the Lagos about Lego states and showcasing the what makes Lagos legendary to the world at large using his platform Explore Lagos Tours. It's a tourism company under the Lagos Life umbrella, which mainly focuses on helping experience and explore the city of Lagos. The second studio guest we have in the building is a young gang popularly known as Patti Jolof, who gathered great influence for himself at such a young age with over 50,000 across all platforms. He works as a social media strategist for Hot FM and a music entrepreneur amongst others. And it will be criminal not for me to mention that he's also an under G professional fine boy. And our final guest who will be joining us via Zoom is the first lady of the conversation for today who is Ada Benjamin popularly known as Auntie Ada on social media who is a social media influencer and brand strategist with years of experience and consistency now that consistency has also made her stand out amongst many and with her with that help she's been, she's been able to create relationships with brands and market affiliations that make you want to take your hats off really and the core Auntie Ada is also an influence not just an influencer but with the heart that goes for business and lifting up others while she can so and she's joining us via Zoom, in case I have not mentioned that. So, welcome, people. Welcome. Welcome. Hello, Auntie Ada. <laughs> you forgot to add that this is official Twitter fine. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter fine boy gang. We <laughs> have basically fine people on, the, <laughs> on the set today. Um, Auntie Ada, you're going to be joining us um, via Zoom, so please feel free to join into the conversation. Um, but let me start. It's fine. With, oh, awesome. Let me start with this: the influencers and the space they occupy. Right? It's. I would say it's something that has kind of just been new to the industry. We didn't really have that like maybe 10, 15 years ago. So I want to I want to find out from each of you really quickly because of time. There's, all, there's a lot of you just to touch on what your experience has been like personally as influencers. I'll start with you, tell me why. Um, for me, I mean, it's, it's been quite a very interesting journey. I mean, the fact that you get to get free gifts from brands <laughs> sometimes, I feel like that's actually my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. And the money, mm. the fact that you can just sit from the comfort of your home and just post and get paid for it. Mm. I mean, nobody saw that coming like yeah. a long time ago, like you said. So, yeah, it's been an interesting journey for me. Although there's been like some ups and downs because there's some months where you don't get like one single job. Right. But then you still have to look cool on camera. So, of course. <laughs> so, I mean, the but then it's actually very interesting. All righty, you, Kati. Yeah. Um, influencing is basically something like I found myself in. It's not something like I learned or something like that. I just. Um, I found that I had followers and I could do this to make money. I could do, I could actually influence people to do this. So um, it's been more of a process of learning on the job. Mm. And yeah, that's, that's basically what I've been on so far. I've done um, different things from video creation mm. to different forms of content creation and all. But so far it's been mainly um, a process of learning and learning as much as I can. Awesome. Basically. What about you, Antiada? Um, basically, it's been fun. It's been, it's been interesting. Imagine yourself um, talking about something on a platform and being paid for it. You, even if you have something to do, even you have to, you have to be at work, or you just sit down somewhere, literally pressing your phone. I remember when I was growing up, my mother would say, you're always pressing your phone. You're always pressing your phone. But right now, she'll be like, oh, keep pressing your phone. And, you know, you're making money from it. But there's always this, um, there's a huge disadvantage that comes with it as well. Because, you know, when I when I talk about the trolls that comes from me, that's just the, the only um, disadvantage and the bad side of it. But overall, it's interesting. It's been fun, you know. 
Okay, so let's talk about um, Omu Nibuli's comments. You heard us discussing it, where she said it can be inconvenient, or it is inconvenient for celebrities to join um, the protest. So um, let me just make it personal for you. Do you think it is inconvenient as an influencer, especially seeing how social media is um, the driving force for um, this whole movement? Mm -hmm. Have you felt any level of influence? Have you gotten calls from any corner? Have you been threatened? <laughs> I mean, let's know. Uh. Talking about comment, I, I feel like this is our fight, mm. so we all have to fight it. You know, as much as some people are claiming, you know, they're cel I mean, they're celebrities, quite alright. But then it's our fight, and so let's just fight it together. It's mm. not some people's fight. Yeah. I mean, your your own voice as a celebrity will actually be respected more than just a random person posting. So I can understand where the people are coming from and saying, oh, you're a celebrity, mm. How do you, uh, put your voice on board, like, let's, let's hear from you, let's, let's see your post, let's do this one, because mm. they know government will listen more if it's coming from a celebrity than yeah. just a random person. So I, feel, I, don't, I don't feel like anybody's pressurizing, pressurizing anybody. I feel like you, sh you shouldn't be told to do some of these things. So mm. I mean, just fight the fight. And let's so you together. personally, you haven't felt any pressure because no. you're more than eager to no, do it? Well, um, personally, um, with this whole, um, whole enters movement, I was there basically at the beginning. So it's not a thing of someone who come and tell me to do it. Mm. And I don't think any brand is in the right position to tell me, oh, don't do this or don't do that. So for now, for now, I've just been really vocal about it. And um, I think that's what everybody should be. Maybe because I've been a victim, but I don't know. I feel like everybody should should um, try their best to associate themselves with this movement right now because this this is it, it doesn't get bigger than it doesn't get better than this mm -hmm. fighting for for better rights in your country it really doesn't i doubt really quickly your takes on that have you personally felt a need to re, you know restrict your opinions because of your affiliates with some of these brands that you're working with ada are you with us? Okay, let's yes, move. Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, all right. Really quickly, your thought, your take on. Sorry um, about that. Yeah, no, it's fine. Have you felt any sort of pressure to restrict your involvement with the SARS movement or your opinions about certain things because of your affiliations with some of these brands, based on what um, Omari has said? Okay, um, I would start with the fact that everybody do have a voice, but irrespective of that, their voices are louder than any other. Like we have people that their voice can be louder than, that's why I'm, what I'm trying to say is that Omoni, she has, she, she's not on that direct to speak mm -hmm. or come out and protest, but she has the voice. Her voice can be louder than some other person's voice. That is why we always go for celebrities that decide to keep quiet and not say anything. Me personally, I have um, kept all sponsored posts on hold for now. I don't care how much you prefer it. If you want a refund, fine, no problems. I don't have I don't have to wait for it to affect me before I talk about it. I have brothers, I have I have cousins, I have male friends that can be affected tomorrow but looking at these things that are happening today i have every right to come out there if you have if you have the heart if you feel these things can affect you tomorrow i think you should come out there to lend your voice it's just normal it's just normal no one's on the directs actually nobody okay. it seems like the influence of the celebrity are not missing eye to eye and um, but i've picked up a lot of um from what you guys have been saying that some of it is personal not everyone who is involved in the protest has gotten involved with SARS on a personal level, be, being honest. Yeah. Yeah. And there are some people that haven't experienced SARS till tomorrow and don't even see our reality and uh, their influences. So I want to talk about those people for, for a second. They, they, it's still that pressure, even if we don't know your life story or whether or not you had personally been involved with SARS. I know that I'm following this influencer and you have plenty of people that are looking up to you. So I want you to go on the road and protest. And some people who have caved in, I'm now assuming that that's the intention here because we've seen a lot of performative 
um, activism. So you must have a picture of you with a placard in the middle of the heat. And then we, we that are standing there with you, we say that that's what you do. And then you bounce because you're not there for too long. You're not helping in any way. You haven't lended your voice in any way that is actually like substantial. So that pressure to be, um, what's it called? To be an activist, a performative activist. Do you think that actually takes away from the protest or is it a, um, will I say a, a it's not a harmful ill? Like, I want to know your thoughts on that. Um, personally, I think, I think um, any help that we get in whatever form is welcome. It's very welcome. Even if you come with, for aesthetics, even if you come to the protest for aesthetics, it's welcome. Even if you just tweet, just the hashtag, no words, no anything, mm. it's welcome. It's, it's, it's helping towards getting the movement to where we want it to be. So um, I think we should not look down on anybody's contribution to um, the movement. We should welcome no matter the, the type Anything. of help we get. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. whether, whether you're doing it for clout, whether you're doing it for photo shoots, whether you're doing it for anything, as long as you're a shah, part of the movement, <laughs> mm -hmm. you're very much welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And that, was exactly, that was exactly the same thing I said. It doesn't matter what you're doing it for. If mm -hmm. you decide to, you know, have yourself all made up and you decide to take a, maybe, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. We have myself all made up, get the shirts, wear it, then just hit the road, take pictures. It's still the same movement. We are doing that for the same cause. Everybody wants it to end. If by, you know, then getting dressed with NSAS t shirts, the inscription says NSAS or so what, whatever. As long as it shows and it still passes the message, I'm in for it. We are all just chase that cloud. If it's cloud, <laughs> please go ahead and chase it. We don't care. Just pass the message. It doesn't matter what you do. Okay, if let you me want to start. go out there, hold the placard, and just take a picture and go back to your house, it's fine. Let me as start with you, um, Antieta, with my question. Um, so, I mean, we've talked about performative activism, how pressure to join and all and being an influencer. So let's talk about the protest in itself. Where do you think this is going to? And when do you think we'll begin to see a retreat from the Nigerian youth? Okay. Personally, um, earlier on, I heard something about people, like, like um, they want the youth to step down a bit or probably relax a bit. I, we want to relax. We want to rest a bit. But the minute we say that, let's believe what they are saying and relax, just check the news. Just check somewhere on the internet. You'd see something that will show to you that they lied to us. You'd see something that they, that they, you just see something that would prove to you that they lied. That thing that we saw is the only thing that would make us not to want to rest. We, you know, like just, just like yesterday, the governor said something, something, something. And same last night, SARS attacked houses. No, now tell me, how do you want to, they said they've ended it or they banned it or they dissolved it or whatever. But same yesterday night, some houses were attacked. People were taken from the comfort of their own house, out of their houses, into their vans, and they were driven away from there. I mean, now tell me, how, why would we want to even think about resting at this moment? Mm. That's why you see people on the streets every day, every day, they want to say something. They still want to say end it we don't even want to know because i personally there are days i'll be like oh, mom, i'm tired i don't want to go out today but when i remember all these things i will go inside my house eat and step out so yeah. following this instance so you just like gave that. now um what would you say is the problem because sometimes i think we even can say we understand the situation and we can say this is what should be done and it's not being done. So do you think there's a disconnect between the IGP and the Commission of Police or what exactly do you think is going on? Mm. What I think is going on is just, it's just a bunch of people that are corrupt. The, you know, the corruption has eaten deep inside them. They know what to do. I feel they know what to do. We just have a bunch of, I'm, I'm, so, I'm not going to say some words, but, but when I think of these things, I, I feel that we're just being mismanaged. Mm. We're just being ruled by people who are selfish. Because by the time you think of the, your citizens, by the time you think of the people, 
you would want to do things in their favor, not yours or not what you are. I, it's only in Nigeria that I see that the, 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 the federal government is scared of the police. I mean, why can't you make decisions for, why can't you just sit down and make a decision that will better, you know, the people? So what I think is the problem is the corruption is eating deep inside them and selfishness too has gotten involved. It's right. always been like that and it's getting worse and worse every day. All right. I'm just taking it to the every boys um, really quickly. The, you know, we've gotten support from Twitter as well mm -hmm. with Jack and Twitter giving us the verifications that we mentioned even before you came in. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see that there were for a second, there was a, I guess, a shift of focus away from the protest onto the people that Twitter was supporting. Now, a lot of them were women, feminists and all of that, which are all deserving. But I, you know, there is also a longer list mm -hmm. of people who are also <coughs> deserving, if that makes sense. And some people feel sidelined mm -hmm. about that. I want to know, your, and you know what I'm saying, without even having to drop names. <laughs> I want to know your thoughts on that. Like, do you think that um, the, the recognition that is being given is deserving? And do you think that there's people who are being sidelined? Have you been sidelined yourselves? Like, what's your what's your personal take on you know this um, new acknowledgement that we're getting from Twitter in regards to the movement? Okay, so for me, I feel it's a gradual process. I mean, the, the first the first time um, Twitter actually verified some people was like two days ago. Yeah. A group of people were verified, and just yesterday. Another set. And that's it. So I feel like it will probably get to you. <laughs> Just hold on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's what I feel. Mm, okay. Um, I I personally am not one um, that is out for recognition personally. So I don't see I don't see the recognition that Twitter is giving to them as a special achievement in any way. The achievement in this whole thing will be when we win and the government says, okay, we're doing this, we're doing this, and we're doing that to um, allay the fears of the citizens and everything. So. If anybody um, that has been putting in work into this movement mm -hmm. um, has not gotten verified by Twitter, I don't think there should be any problem in okay. that. Twitter is only verifying pages that seem to be um, really active so that people can see more of what they're doing and people can um, believe them as credible sources, considering exactly. the fact because that... Because there are a lot of parody accounts out there. Yes, days, yes. So like so, yeah, and also considering the fact that Twitter is basically where we are getting most of the information yeah, from, right. it seems like the um, um, conventional media has been compromised basically by the yeah. government. So, so they have to do that to make sure that okay, um, credible information is going around and passing around. So. If um, you've not been verified, no vex. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we just mentioned a, um, a few minutes ago now that they are performative activists. I mean, influencers that are activists, right? And you can do that on social media. You could just sure. copy. I've seen a lot of influencers do that. A random person will write something powerful. You now take it to your own platform as yours, and you get that same recognition. Isn't there a, a, a fear? Because you guys are very like, it's okay, it's all right, everything is good, and it will get to you. But isn't there a risk that you could, a, a, an influencer could get recognized by Twitter for, you know, doing well that is not necessarily deserving or, and it could be detrimental to the movement in itself because their intentions are not pure. I mean, yes, it helps, everything helps, but there is a clear difference between somebody who is in it for it and somebody who is performative because when the, you know, when the, when the, I don't want to, I cannot speak on TV, when the stuff gets to the fan, you know, yeah. like, that's when you can see that performative perform um, um, activism is not going to last. And let's say somebody like that now gets a, a recognition because they can tweet often and they, are, they happen to get the recognition, then something bad could happen to the movement. Do you not, do you not think that there, there is detrimental sides of, of, getting, of that kind of person getting um, recognition? Well, um, I think like it's just a case of um, maybe when the stakes are down, it, you you know who is real and who is not real. At the end of the day, it's um, whatever acts the, anybody is putting up can never mm. last forever. Mm. And Twitter, and um, okay, Twitter is a place, a community where um, you can't you can't deceive people if you fuck up. <laughs> if you mess up, you will, you will come at you. Sorry for okay. that. So, so I feel like, so like, let me just add to that. So um, I feel like there's actually, I know that there's actually a team of people responsible for verifying certain accounts. Mm. And I feel like there also be like some background checks yeah. that will go into looking at some of those accounts. So right. Twitter won't just verify just anybody. Right. That's what I said. It takes time. 
Yeah. Mm. You get bored. So we should trust the process. Exactly. Um, we, we will leave it at that. Let's trust the process, guys. Thank you so much for um, joining in and watching this conversation with us. But unfortunately, that is all that we can take today because we're running out of time or we ran out of the time. But thank you for watching. Join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Remember that you can catch up on all our previous episodes, including this one and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Thank <laughs> you.